Well, the next thing we wanted to get to today is wheat spraying. And what are you gonna do on your first pass? Whether it's winter wheat or spring wheat, what are you gonna go out there with? It's probably not just gonna be one thing. Well, that's the problem. We see a lot of guys that say, oh, I'm gonna make my first pass because I see some broadleaf weeds popping up. I better get my broadleaf spray out there. So I need wide match, I need husky. I'm probably gonna mix some affinity broad spec with it or something like that, and I'm ready to go. But then, you know, they come in and, and talk to me and say, hey, you know, this is what I'm thinking. I'm gonna go spray my wheat. I'm like, well, what about fungicide? Oh man, never thought about that. Oh, what about bugs? Did you look and see if there are any bugs out there? No, I didn't think about that. So before you get going with that first pass, Take a look out there okay. and think about it. Yep, so there are four main categories that we're going to address real quickly. So we've got herbicide, we've got insecticide, fungicide, and then the last thing we'll talk about is biological products, plant growth hormones, however you want to classify that. So let's first get to the herbicide end of things. We're very big believers in if you've got a lot of weed pressure out there, a lot of broadleaves and a lot of grass, to split apply your grass product from your broadleaf product. Spray the grass product first because grass hurts you worse in wheat and then go to the broadleaf product. But if you don't have all that many weeds, it's fine to combine the two. So Axial is probably the best on wild oats and foxtails, but Axial is an ACC ace. There's been ACC ace resistant wild oats, so you might consider something like Gold Sky or possibly Everest 2.0. Whoa, 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 Everest 2.0, Brian, is awfully good on wild oats. I, so, I like that. I, so I don't think, oh, it's it just wasn't. it's just if Axial is not going to work. No, no I'm I, saying I, I think axial, it's a good choice. And it also, is. I think if I you're. I still think Axial slightly better, but if, it, they're If you're close. spraying wheat every year, you should be rotating. Use Axial one year, use Everest 2.0 the next year, and hey, maybe, you get a nice Maybe, but how about if you use Prepare, Pre-Emerge, that's an ALS. Maybe you want to follow with an ACC Ace like Axial. That's a good deal, too, <laughs> if you get two shots okay. of different products. You need to rotate. Now, let's get into these broadleaf weeds, though, Brian, because, you know, guys say, all it's right, all right, there. I don't have real much simple. for grass, I real got broadleaf. Simple. Okay, so if I've got kochia or Canada thistle, and they're by far my worst two weeds, wide match is my choice. I'd probably tank mix addition or affinity broad spec or affinity or addition tank mix instead of using a 2,4-D in there, but that's the way I'd go. Now, if I've got just about any other weed, I think husky's a little bit better choice. Again, I'd probably throw in some affinity or addition just to tighten that up a little bit. I am not a big believer in spraying a wolf pack or anything that contains 2,4-D just because I think it hurts the weed a little bit, but you can certainly do it. It's relatively inexpensive. Okay, now if you're spraying a herbicide out there, a lot of guys want to tank mix that fungicide in. Right now is a good yep, time to do it. Time. You've got early season, typically a little bit cooler, typically a little bit damp, but it's not always. It could be in dry weather too that you can have some disease issues. But let's just say you're talking about tan spot or some of these yep. early season diseases. Yep. Is there much of a difference? We get all these questions, well, do I need a triazole? Do well, I need something like a tilt or bumper? Or can I use a strobal urine like a headline or a quadris or a veto? Honestly, when I look at the yield data, I think that headline performs better. I mean, it, just looking at all the yield data, obviously quadris and a veto are similar products to headline. They are strobal urines. I would probably not pick bumper, but if you're, let's say, in a dry area that doesn't have a lot of disease, it's quite a bit cheaper. I mean, significantly cheaper. So if you would rather go that way, you certainly can. Well, Here's the reason that I think guys do it. They're gonna use headline later on. They say, you know what? I'm gonna have something come maybe. up, maybe around flag leaf timing is where we see a lot of stripe rust pop up in our area. I like headline in that combination product, like the twin line, where you've got some caramba in there, you've got some headline in there. That's what I like to use. Okay, but for now, all we're focused on is what are we going to do today? And today, my choice would probably be a strobal urine. That's probably what I would do. And at herbicide timing, I think that's a good time to do it. But don't use that same product multiple times. Yeah, but in you year. don't have much choice because, I mean, there are only two choices. There's strobal urine, there's triazole, and if I want to spray fungicide three times, I have to, I have to double up at some point. Yeah, but That's most, most guys at. are going to use two. That's what I'm saying. If you're a guy that says, you know, I typically spray twice with fungicide, use one one time and one time. And if my timing isn't heading and it has to be a triazole, then my early has to be a strobal urine, and that's what I'm getting at. All right. Okay, let's talk about the insecticide real quick. The only thing we'll bring up about insecticide is it's dirt cheap. I'm talking $1.50 to $2 an acre. And, I mean, you can have a fantastic rate. The highest labeled rate on uh, pyrethroid is probably 2 bucks an acre. That's it. So just scout your fields, get off the sprayer. If you got harmful bugs, kill them. It's not that tough. Okay, the last category was plant growth hormones or even, let's throw fertilizer in there too. I mean, some guys ask about, can I foliar feed? You know what? Definitely don't throw a buckdrill together with or a 2,4-D together with a foliar fertilizer, you're gonna have a lot of leaf burn. Is it gonna be excessive? Well, that's hard to say, but I wouldn't do it if it was me. Well, no, I typically like to see those things in a separate application. If you're yeah. doing some fertility program, just put it out there separate. 
that's fine. You aren't going to have any interaction that way, and it'll probably be better for you in the first place. Why don't you address plant growth hormones like Mega Grow, for example? Well, there are certainly some plant growth hormones out there, and Brian and I have traveled around the world, looked at a lot of different crops, and when we get into higher dollar production, things where guys are getting a thousand dollars an acre back, they say, "Man, we've been using plant growth hormones for years. How come you guys never talk about that in your so corn that, and soybeans?" That's why we're trying well, them a lot. Because more we used to have two dollar corn and three dollar yeah. wheat and five dollar beans. Well, we couldn't afford to do it, but now we can. And there are some products out there. Mega Grow is one of them, but there's other products out there too. Take a look at some of those. Maybe try them on a few acres on your farm. See if they make a difference for you. Well, once again, if you want to have high yielding wheat this year, and especially now that the wheat price is fairly decent, you can get a pretty good return on investment doing a number of things in your crop. So I would definitely consider if I was you looking at herbicide, fungicide, insecticide, and then possibly some other things even. And when you go into this wheat, first pass in your crop. Well, one thing you may see out in your wheat is our wheat of the week. We'll show you how to stop it coming up next.